In this video, we're going over cleaning up Windows 10. I'm gonna break it into three parts. One, de-bloating the actual system level. Like, you, let's say it's a fresh install, you run this de-bloat script, it removes a lot of the unnecessary garbage that gets installed from either feature updates or fresh install. So even if you've been using your Windows 10 for several years, this will actually clean up and make it run quite a bit faster. And then in phase two, I go over startup programs and show you where everything is starting up. Now you can easily follow along using no tools whatsoever for either one of these steps. We're, we're not actually going to be downloading any software for the step one and two. And disable a lot of the startup programs that slow down your computer. And then in, in step three, that's where we kind of ratchet it back, clean up some of the privacy issues with Windows 10, and then also just make it a lot better with some basic system tweaks. So that's basically all I'm doing in this video. Now, I originally did a debloat video a year ago. That one uh, I thought was a pretty bad video. It was actually one of the very first ones I shot on a little crappy webcam. And I know this one, it's gonna be a lot more clear and concise so you can easily follow it. So with all that said, let's jump into it. This video is brought to you by CDN77, the content delivery network used by space agencies and CentOS. I also am using this on ChrisTitus.com to speed up my website. So if you're interested in this, click the link in the description. So for this video, I'm actually showing uh, my streaming PC. Now I haven't run the debloat script on this in quite a while, probably about a year and a half or so. And I use this for a whole variety of functions, uh, certain Windows only software that doesn't run on Linux, I'll actually use this system. So let's go ahead and clean this up because it, it really does need a cleaning. Uh, and I recommend probably running these steps about every six months or so, or as you see fit. If you're, you notice a slowdown, a lot of times this will give you a good boost, especially after Windows 10 feature updates. Windows 10 feature updates will actually uh, install a lot of this stuff all over again. So that, and that usually happens about every six months to a year, depending on your setup. So. With all that said, we're going to go ahead and I have a follow video. I made an article on my uh, website, christitis.com, and I'll put the link down in the description. It's just uh, you come here and you can actually easily follow along all those steps. I documented it so you can copy paste all these commands and not have to sit here and squint and read exactly what I'm doing on the screen. So first thing, we're going to run our debloat script. We're going to right click the Windows key down here and go to Windows PowerShell Admin. You may get a UAC prompt, just hit yes to continue. From here, we're on the actual PowerShell. You'll see PS in front of it. If you don't see this and it's a CMD or you don't have that option, you can actually launch into PowerShell by just typing PowerShell from the command prompt. So if it's black and it's not blue like this screen, you can easily fix that by just typing PowerShell. So now it says administrator Windows PowerShell. We can easily run our script. Now, I have this command right here. This is actually a GitHub project. It's the same debloat script from a year ago that I actually did a video on, but it's been evolved a little bit and it made it a little more user friendly for everyone. So you can actually just come in here and paste this in. Now you can paste this by control V to paste, or you can simply just copy it with the mouse and then just right click directly in the PowerShell. This will go out, download the debloat script, and then launch this nice graphic user interface. From here, we can customize the blacklist, or we can just say, hey, remove all bloatware, or remove all bloatware with a customized blacklist. So if you're doing like certain things, or you wanna leave certain things in here, you can customize the blacklist first, and then remove with the customized blacklist. However, for this, I'm just hit remove all bloatware. And in the background, I'm gonna kinda pan this over to the right, you can kind of see what's happening. It goes through, removes any tech services, any other packages that get installed that you just don't need. Okay, so now the actual remove all bloatware is done. Um, other tweaks that I highly recommend, and we'll just go ahead and do them since we're already here, is disabling Cortana. 
um, stopping Edge PDF takeover. This is basically Microsoft Edge is their browser. Most people use like Adobe or, or a lot of other PDF viewers. So that's why I recommend just uh, hitting stopping the PDF takeover. If you don't use OneDrive, go ahead and uninstall it. Um, I don't use OneDrive and I think it is currently on here. After a feature update, this usually gets reinstalled because OneDrive's integrated with Windows 10. So yeah, we need to actually go through and uninstall that. You can unpin all the tiles from the start menu, which uh, I, when you run the debloat all script, it goes ahead and does this, which can be annoying if you've been using your computer for a while. It will unpin um, all your stuff from the start menu just by hitting the remove all. And then disable telemetry and tasks. You want to hit that as well. And then remove bloatware reg keys. Okay, with all the bloatware pretty much removed, I highly recommend if you wanna do dark mode, which is uh, the actual settings on here, you see how everything's dark. Uh, you can actually hit enable dark mode to get that. I like this feature, but you may not, depends on taste. And then enable uh, installing .NET 3.5. Chances are you've probably already installed that, so you probably don't need to install this. But with that, our debloat section of this is complete. Let's move on to step two, which is startup and removing startup entries. Now, I went ahead and in step two, uh, you just need to launch in a task manager. Now, there is an advanced section of this, so check the timestamps down below if you wanna skip the advanced section that I'm about to go into. But for the basic section, you just need to launch task manager by right-clicking an empty spot on the taskbar and hitting task manager. You can also pull up task manager by holding control shift and hitting escape this pulls up your task manager from here you can go into startup and we're just gonna go ahead and put this on the left hand side and you can actually go ahead and disable whatever it is and you can kind of show what what is in here like let's say I didn't want next cloud to start I can just right click and hit disable and this will disable that actual startup so uh, what you can easily do is do that reboot your computer, see if that affects it at all. And then if it does, you're like, okay, um, I wanna go ahead and do that. Now I see uh, Microsoft OneDrive set up. We, we already uninstalled that, so let's make sure we disable that. Adobe Updater, I don't really like Adobe checking and updating all the time, so I'm gonna disable that as well. But this is the basic startup that you can actually go through. Now, some people are like, hey, I disabled this stuff, but I wanna go ahead and delete it. And this is the start of the advanced section. So if you don't want to, click the little timestamp below and go ahead and jump to step three. So the advanced section kind of shows you where all these startup programs reside on your computer. So I use these a lot with uh, group policy objects and things like that when uh, it comes to my day-to-day -day operations as a system admin. So. Most people need to know where this resides, especially if you're in the IT industry, it'll definitely help you out. So the first is going down here, right clicking and hit run, and then we're just gonna go shell. And there's two places that startup items can reside from here. Shell common startup, which is all users on the system, which we don't have anything in here. And then we also have regular startup, which is what my user has. Now we have three systems launching an EOS utility for this camera that I'm recording on right now, map drives in the Synology drive client. Now the map drives is just a batch file to map certain things in my actual environment. Um, the Synology drive client I also use. So I don't want to remove any of these from my startup but you notice that didn't show all the startup programs. That's because Windows is a really old operating system and there's certain places it likes to hide things. So the next place we like to check for startup items would be the registry. So if we right click on this and hit run and go reg edit, you'll have this as a startup. Now, just like our shell, there's the current user and then there's also the local machine. So uh, going through this real quick, I use a lot of hotkeys here to get through this. Arrows will expand, like if I do the right arrow, it expands here. And I go down to software and you can just type S to skip down. And then we need to go to Microsoft, type M to skip down to Microsoft and down, down, and then over, expand Microsoft, go down to Windows, and then current version, and then run. From this key, you can see a whole bunch more stuff. So we can see OneDrive setups right there. We need to delete that. And next cloud, let's say I was getting rid of that as well. So uh, this is kind of where the rest of those startup items are. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this whole tree. And then we're gonna do the same thing under local machine just to see what else is there. Now, and we're going into Microsoft Windows, 
current version run again, and we see a whole bunch more stuff. So we got the Stream Deck from El Delgado, and then we also have this Adobe. Uh, so let's go ahead and kill it. And I always leave the Windows Defender, unless you have a third party antivirus, I always leave Windows Defender enabled and updated when you can. So that's it for, for the actual registry. These are the two spots that most startup programs reside in the registry. But then there's one more spot we need to check because sometimes Windows is a little tricky and they use what's called task scheduler. And this isn't necessarily a startup program, but it's stuff that gets run while you're using your computer. So it's really important to look at your library and, and you can go through and really tweak out a system by modifying this. So let's take a look here uh, what's running on the regular so uh, we have CC cleaner which I don't use ever so let's go ahead delete that Adobe we already said I don't care about it running so we're gonna delete that um, and now if you don't know what these are definitely read up Google them see what's going on there's a bunch of Nvidia crash reporting it looks like so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these as well update dailies um, and, and you don't necessarily have to delete you can also let's say I don't want the self update from GeForce experience I can just go in and hit disable instead of delete and then it'll re-enable when it needs uh, usually when you launch GeForce experience it'll add a lot of this stuff back in here so uh, I'm not too worried about these self checks but be careful about it. I always recommend disabling first, rebooting, making sure it's not affecting anything, and then maybe coming back in a day or two and then deleting them. So with all of our startup stuff out of the way, let's jump into system tweaks and privacy. Now, this is where I get into third-party software. I could manually go through, and if you're completely anti-third-party software, let's say you're a system admin and you're not allowed to use something like this, uh, by all means, you need to set all these in group policy and manually apply every single setting. The reason why I don't recommend a home user doing this is it's very cumbersome. There's literally hundreds of privacy concerns when it comes to Windows, especially Windows 10. In. So uh, that's why I just say, hey, run this software because it usually sets everything that you need to know. And we'll walk through it real fast using Ono Shutup. So we'll go launch into another tab here and download our Ono Shutup. This doesn't technically install directly on your computer, it just runs wherever it is. So uh, we can just click on this and launch it. And you'll see it launches the program, no installations needed. Now you can go through and see what all these do, but what I like to do is go through actions and say, apply only recommended settings. And it goes ahead and just kind of takes care of everything for you. I wanted to show a couple things. Like some people are like, I want to be as secure as possible. And they go, actions, apply all settings. And then they go to stream or they go ahead and do uh, something like that. Like let's say record a YouTube video and then all of a sudden their camera, their mic, nothing's registering. They're like, ah, what's going on? Well, that's because uh, Windows 10 locked down the camera and microphone settings, all these things when you do apply all actions. So a lot of these peripherals get disabled and locked down when you do that. So I want to warn against that, but you'll see it right here, microphone and camera. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest things that happens when you do it all. But other things is it disables telemetry, which is what gets sent back to Microsoft, uh, like how you've been using your computer. And Microsoft uses this data to improve Windows. So with a lot of the disabling of tracking and privacy in here, it's pretty much done. All you really need to do is just hit apply all only recommended and then just close the program. That's super easy. But I always recommend when you use a third party software, go through it, read about it. If you're unsure about it, Google it first and see what other people are saying because you just never know. And then obviously run a virus scan on it. You can always run and submit these programs to virustotal.com is probably my big recommendation for those. So with that, we're getting close to the end of the video here. Um, right click again, and we're gonna go back into PowerShell or Command Prompt, it doesn't matter really for this one. And we're just gonna go Power CFG Hibernate off. This turns off hibernation, and this helps a lot uh, with freeing up, you know, memory and disk usage, really disk usage is the big thing. I hate hibernation, but if you do use hibernation, obviously skip this tweak. So an alternative to using the little start menu here, um, one more tweak here, uh, just to easily get through and like paste things, you can actually open up your apps folder 
in Explorer and easily pin stuff that you need. Let's say uh, I was always using Google Chrome. You can say pin to start, or let's say I wanted to pin it to the taskbar. You can do it all from here. This makes it really easy to customize your system back to how it should be. Like let's say it unpinned all your stuff from the start menu. This is an easy way to kind of get back to where you were at. Let's say I'm using Notepad++ all the time, uh, my EOS utility for my camera, and uh, barrier to switch machines. I, I can go through all these and it just kind of pops it all in here. So I can easily customize like my start menu a little easier with this command. Another good shell start menu here is, let's say you wanted to go ahead and change up your start menu. Let's say there's an actual bunch of junk in here. You can do shell start space menu and this will pull up the start menu. And from here, you can go into your programs and kind of clean up some of this stuff. Like, let's say I wanted to get rid of OneDrive out of here. And let's just clear up some of this stuff on my start menu. And then when you go to restart your computer or log out, log back in, it should refresh your start menu. So a lot of those things would be out of here. Now, obviously, since I just did this, um, I need to actually restart. And since I'm streaming on this computer or actually recording on this computer, I, I don't want to do that in this environment. But it's a good way to clean up that start menu and, and get it a little more uh, not as bulky so you can get around. So that was cleaning up Windows 10. I hope you enjoyed this. Now, I obviously don't use Windows 10 a whole bunch here at the house. I obviously use it every day at work. And then uh, I have it for a separate computer here for streaming and some gaming. I'll dual boot into Windows 10. But anymore, I've actually switched to Linux in the past year uh, and been trying to learn a lot more about Linux desktop. That's why a lot of videos on my channel revolves around Linux desktop because that's where I kind of see the future of desktop computing going, especially when it comes to gaming and, and also utilizing old hardware. Linux is just fantastic for that, or, or at least will be as it's gotten better. But if you're interested in those, check out my other videos because I really go in depth with Linux desktop. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts on this video down in the comments section and a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.